In 2014, I bought myself a 3D printer. Uh, I did take some videos and some photos at the time, and I don't really think I had the same kind of recording discipline I do now. Uh, so I'm going to turn what I did into a video and maybe some of the original footage saying where there is some. The first thing I had to do with it was to assemble it. Uh, the printer was an Ormerod 2 RepRap Pro printer and it came in a number of different parts in boxes. Uh, so I unboxed it all, took all the wrapping off, checked that I had everything and started going through the assembly steps. This took probably a few days uh, on and off and it arrived just around the Christmas period um, which was a kind of a happy accident really. I didn't take anywhere near as many photos or videos as I should so you'll see it jump from nearly assembled uh, less most of the uh, the bed and the power supply and the controller and straight into a footage of the printer being first calibrated and working. Some awkward delamination. I'm not entirely sure why, but the heated bed is not heated, and I think the program was set up for ABS as opposed to PLA. I think I might have to stop it. So there's still some slight kinks in the bed. Um, it's heating nicely. I'm still having adhesion problems. Now, to be honest, I didn't do the most neat job with the Capton tape. However, it's printing, and maybe, although the outline is the only bit that's really delaminated, I might get the next layer looking good. It's doing a fill-in at the moment. Now, oh, what's it up to here? You can kind of see the extruder motor working. We are getting a relatively good print. Now this is the calibration print, so this is the one where I get to find out if my axes are straight. Um, it was a, I'm not really sure. I did use a set square earlier in the process, so that's a good thing. But that's not to say it's all perfect, and so if this turns out to be slightly off, then I may have to adjust it and print this again. Now, Pronterphase is estimating four hours for this print. I might go and time lapse the rest of this. I've noticed one thing. If you look at Pronterphase over here, it is actually reducing the time remaining from four hours to three hours fourteen. That time is going down very very rapidly probably because the printer took a while for the heated bed to catch up which was a bit of a cold room and it seems to take quite a time between saying I want to heat the bed and the thermistor reading which may be just the uh, the time for the temperature to propagate through the um, uh, through the aluminium spreader plate and for the uh, thermistor to sync up So watching this has set me thinking, goodness, it's doing quite a deep infill. But then I realise I'm on the bottom two layers where it's probably going to have to do a solid infill so they're actually the bottom is solid. But perhaps as it gets to the near later layers we'll start to see it doing some kind of honeycomb infill. Uh, I'm rather looking forward to seeing that because it'll be interesting to see and how much I wonder of the inside of these actual uh, Ormorod parts that were printed and sent to me have got a honeycomb infill as well. Still on the infill layers, and you can kind of see just how fast it's feeding through the the, uh, the well the filament. Although saying that, that gear may be turning fairly rapidly visibly, but it might still only be pushing a fair bit through. Oh, did you see that? It, I think it retracted its filament there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Glad to see to have seen that and to capture that. 
I wonder why there are kinks in the corners of those uh, those little set square type pieces. I don't know if that's intentionally part of the file or if that is some foul up by the printer. Oh no, no they're actually in the designs, okay. Always worth verifying if you're printing someone else's files, if you see something unusual. And if you look at this now, this is doing a fairly rapid infill. So this must be uh, one of the later layers. Uh, and it's doing a pretty quick infill on this now. Um, just diagonal lines going in. Now the estimated time is the remaining is now fluctuating around 2 hours 20. Which is probably far more realistic than the 4 hours it once gave. Or even at one point it said one day, day in 17 hours. But that wasn't when it wasn't really sure about the bed heating temperature. Frustratingly, uh, while the printer's heating the bed and then in the, the M116 instruction to wait, uh, it doesn't report any temperatures back to the uh, to the front end. It'd be nice if it printed those out in a way that the front end could understand, so it could keep up to date. I might want to feed that back. Somewhat later stage, and the uh, honeycomb structures of the inside are far more visible now. There's been a few layers of them put down. Um, I've got a slight bed adhesion issue in one corner, but hopefully it'll resolve itself. Now, one problem here is it's actually set itself to a temperature of 185 as opposed to 200. Now, I don't know if that's causing some lamination issues, if it's actually coming out a little bit too cool from the nozzle. So I don't know if I can actually override the nozzle temperature here. Let me try that. OK, I've attempted to set the hot end to a slightly higher temperature, which may get around some of this delamination I've seen on a few of those layers there, and it may mean the remaining layers are better joined. Uh, I might uh, switch the original one here. Right, there we go. Calm at 515 degrees directly. That was nice and quick. Again, this is an initial print, so a little bit of experimentation. There's bound to be a couple of mistakes. And, frankly, I am a newbie to 3D printing. Now, I'm not hearing the clicking sounds I was getting as it delaminated and warped earlier on these later layers. Um, since I'm no longer hearing those... Actually, there was one right there. OK, well I'm going to keep an eye on this. I don't know. There's something I might have to figure out with parameters and settings. Uh, well, it's alright. It's time to learn a bit more, isn't it? Well, I'm now finding the circular thing intriguing. Again, I've only really vaguely looked at the definition file, but that circular thing has got little notches all the way around the outside. It's quite an interesting little calibration device. I'll have to find out how to use it all. So the theory is you print it. And you read a bit more and it tells you exactly how to use it to calibrate the printer and to uh, make sure the axes are all aligned and to find any other calibration issues. Um, it appears that since I've adjusted the settings, it is laminating far better. And now you've got a nice deep honeycomb structure that's very clear. I rather like that. So we're about, what, an hour in or so? Um, so there's an hour and 32 remaining. I'm still not quite happy with how badly some of the layers have laminated, but it does, on the most part, seem to be making coherent pieces. Um, it's doing the top fill on one of them, which is quite interesting to see. Um, or on one corner it's done a top fill, and on the other it's still doing infill. We'll have to find out what the, uh, the whole thing looks like at the end, but uh, yeah, this is getting interesting now. While I'm not uh, happy with how it has laminated, some of that clicking was not actually down to the delamination or something popping off. Um, had I been observing better, I'd have noticed that it was actually the filament, as it's being pulled around, every now and again catches on the, uh, the reel, on the spool as it comes off. And that clicking is just some of the filament clicking into place as it settles around the spool after being put under a little bit of tension while being pulled through the extruder. Well, that's a bit of a relief. At least I now know what that sound is. Um, much earlier, while calibrating, before I started this print, 
there were clicks coming off of the y-axis and it just turned out that uh, one of the cable ties was a little bit looser than it should have been um, and the looser cable tie was every now and again catching on one of the other items under the, the, the bed um, so I tightened it up, clipped it off and that's gone um, now I've got a few other ones like uh, this one up here which I probably need to tidy up um, and I'm also keeping my eyes on any kind of cables that might work loose during printing um, one of the ones that's um, not in use during printing but certainly during homing um, is that y-axis uh, end stop uh, switch and the y-axis end stop switch the cables there seem to be a bit fragile and pop off occasionally the other one I'm vaguely worried about is the heated bed sensor which equally sometimes seems to have popped off once or twice that one could be fatal while it's running so that's what I've really got to find a way to seal especially as you can see the uh, the big silvered cable the big shielded cable there that's actually for a heated bed um, and that's moving rather a lot as the Y moves so if that thing occasionally works itself loose it hasn't done so in this print um, and I don't know if that's just because I'm also having to handle this so um, this is a yeah the table here is actually a temporary rig involving a couple of dining chairs and some MDF board um, which is something I have to put away at the end of every evening because there isn't really space at the moment in the flat for me to do anything more permanent that means when I bring the machine down I have to do a couple of things one is check all the connections um, I may put in a shim to make them more permanent and stay in better um, there's no cover on the back of this RepLab Pro because it wasn't sent yet but I've uh, informed uh, the, the manufacturers and I might see if I can 3D print something that will do in the meantime to keep those cables in um, but it also means I maybe have to be careful with some of the calibration and homing now I will do a homing cycle and the uh, G32 which is the bed levelling compensation um, and I'll try to do that before every print or when I bring it down anyway but it's just something to be vaguely aware of that uh, you know things may get out of whack because I'm having to lift the whole printer and move it around interesting it's done some kind of infill there is it actually going to do oh sorry some kind of full fully filled top filled layer and I don't know if that's been now because it's actually reached the end of this or if it's about to do some middle fully filled in layer and then another poly uh, another uh, honeycomb layer on top by the way the axis has started moving I'm actually suspecting the latter I think it's actually done one solid layer and then it's going back to honeycomb again suppose you'd want to do that for some of the strength and make sure there's a bit of lateral strength so it doesn't all come off in one direction. Although the very nature of the 3D printing being laminated gives it some structural weakness if you probably tried to shear it along the laminations. So at this point it's still doing a full infill. Um, we're a little later uh, from when I actually earlier mentioned. Um, and I haven't really worked out what it thinks it's doing. It's not gone back to honeycomb. However, it looks like we're on the last few layers. I think it's now going to do a vertical third axis layer going upwards, which should show me my Z. Oh, you can kind of see it coming out, actually. Let me see if I can get the camera right in. Now, it's going to get a lot shakier at this point, because I'm coming off tripod. Can you see that? There's an additional axis coming up. So that's apparently another one hour seven as it's going up on that one axis alone. That must be why it's done infill on those other layers, because that is actually the solid top of the other part. Right, this now makes perfect sense. Now it's doing a full infill on that additional axis going up. And I'm sure it would take less time if that was actually a honeycomb going up. Well, you can now see that uh, additional upward axis coming on. Um, we've now got about apparently 55 minutes remaining of the print. Um, I don't know how accurate the, uh, the pronto phase output you know for estimated time is I mean it is after all an estimated time um, and the estimated time may still be based on the fact that this took a rather long time for the bed to heat up okay something horrible just happened there it might recover fine 
um, the computer went into a standby mode because I've not touched the screen or any of the keyboard in a long time. It's a laptop running Windows, running a fairly standard power profile. Um, and the printer just froze, just stopped doing anything. Now it looks like none of the temperatures changed, um, but it does look like you've got to make sure you keep the computer awake. Or perhaps, in this case, maybe what I should do is change to a different power profile, i.e. a 3D printing profile, which is don't sleep ever. Um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. I might need to make changes to that. There is, on that um, Z-axis part coming right up, uh, a little blob about here. Now, I'm going to have to check the file when it's done to see if that's intentional or if that was a glitch in the machine. Now, that could actually have been when the machine went into pause mode. After calibrating, I attempted a few prints. These improved in quality as I got more used to the printer and even the first one looked good on the tree. So these files, the snowman and this whistle came from the manufacturer. I then downloaded this, a frozen style snowflake to print for my children. And then also this which is a fan plate which assists the hot end in cooling after it's extruded.